Riots are at a prison in the southwestern coastal city of Guayaquil killed 116 inmates and injured some 80 others. Canada will pay homage to the children who died while attending residential schools and the survivors during the commemorations of First and National Day of Truth and Reconciliation. Israeli occupation forces abuses and killings continue in Palestine as the regime is designated a young man and a mother of three. From Havana, Cuba, welcome to Front the South on Thursday. A coalition of parliamentarians across Europe have written to Antonio Romalo, CEO of the Portuguese bank Novo Banco, urging him to act in accordance with international law and release the funds in order to save the health and lives of Venezuelan children. On this matter, Telesur speaks with David Adler, General Coordinator of the Progressive International. Welcome to Telesur. How are you? Thanks very much for having me. It's a pleasure to be back on the show. On what basis did the signatories of the letter demand that, that Novo Banco CEO release the amounts due to the Pan American Health Organization by Venezuela and deposited it in the Portuguese bank? Since 2017, the Portuguese private bank, Novo Banco, has confiscated roughly $1.7 billion that belonged to the Venezuelan government and specifically to Bandes, the Venezuelan Development Bank. Uh, uh, that Portuguese bank, Novo Banco, I hasten to add, uh, is only 25% owned by the Portuguese government and 75% owned by a private equity firm uh, based in the United States, based in Texas, called Lone Star Funds. So that's the broader context of the case that uh, we're examining here. And of that $1.7 billion, the Venezuelan government, Bandes in particular, the development bank, is simply asking that they release roughly $12 million directly to the Pan American Health Organization to pay for over 13 million vaccines or polio, diphtheria, yellow fever, diseases like that that often affect children hardest, and roughly 33 million syringes. The Pan American Health Organization has agreed to this payment. They're awaiting the transfer of funds, that small amount of funds, just 12 million of the 1.7 billion that is currently owed directly from Novo Banco to the Pan American Health Organization. Once again, I emphasize, this is money that's never going to touch the hands of the Venezuelan government, that a Portuguese court has already ruled, has no risk of embezzlement or money laundering, is already ring-fenced for the medicines, uh, vaccines, syringes, medical equipment that I mentioned already to be sent directly to Venezuela. So we think this is a really neat encapsulation of the problem that sanctions or unilateral coercive measures, as they're called, in arenas like the United Nations, posed to a country like Venezuela. David, like you said, Novo Banco is majority owned by U.S. private equity firm Lone Star. Taking this into account, we ask you, to what extent would CEO Antonio Romalo have the authority to release the Venezuelan funds? Does the letter sent to him have any binding character? Well, certainly not. Uh, no, this is a collection of parliamentarians from across Europe who are taking up the case uh, that has since, you know, uh, been kind of abandoned by the international community to raise the alarm about the humanitarian consequences of those coercive, unilateral, and illegal sanctions imposed by the United States. Of course, Novo Banco is free to send this payment, both the Pan American Health Organization and the Portuguese government, which recognizes the government in Venezuela, uh, is capable of sending this money. But they have refused to respond, let alone comply with that request from Bandes in recent months. In case that Novo Banco CEO doesn't accept to release the 10 million euros of the 1.7 billion the Portuguese bank keeps confiscated in order to pay to the Pan American Health Organization for over 13 million vaccines and 3 million medical syringes to the people of Venezuela, what are we talking about? Could we consider this a crime against humanity unfolding in Portugal pushed by the United States or not? strong uh, reasons uh, set out by even the Venezuelan government at the International Criminal Court for suggesting that these illegal and extreme sanctions imposed by the United States and other countries on Venezuela and indeed on other countries who fall under the sanctions regime do fall under uh, you know, war crimes legislation or crimes against humanity. 
you know, the, the fact is that sanctions may be invisible, but they're no less a weapon of war. So we need to treat them as such. So I think that there's a question with Neville Bonko, if they're not willing to uh, comply with this request, then it is essential to continue to increase the pressure, continue to raise the profile of this case, so that the clear humanitarian implications of these invisible sanctions are made evident, and that there's accountability for the consequences for the thousands, even millions of children around the world who are impacted uh, by these sanctions. And David, at least but not last, the Venezuelan, or at last but not least, I meant the Venezuela's National Electoral Council and the European Union have recently signed an agreement for the deployment of an electoral observation mission of the EU for the regional and municipal elections to be held on November 21st. This statement sums up to the letter back in Venezuela's rights to its assets. Would this mean a change of perspective from the EU to Maduro's government and the Bolivarian revolution? Certainly not. I wouldn't want to overstate the extent to which the European Union has changed its position, both in terms of its economic relationship to Venezuela and in terms of its geopolitical relationship to the United States, which is where these sanctions originate. Uh, I do think there are signs of uh, hope towards pursuing uh, more diplomatic solutions to these problems, as opposed to the use of these extreme and illegal sanctions. However, I think it's critical that we're honest about where we're at in this process, which is uh, still a quite extreme situation in terms of the sanctions that are suffocating, strangling, and blocking humanitarian access to uh, access to humanitarian aid and medical equipment for the government and the people of Venezuela. David, thank you very much. We'll be right back after this, a very short break, so don't go away. Welcome back. September 30th uh, will mark the first National Day for Truth and Reconciliation in Canada. An annual commemoration honoring the children who died while attending residential schools and the survivors. The statuary holiday honors as well as families and communities still affected by the country's uh, bleak history of uh, mistreatment of indigenous peoples and the lasting intergenerational trauma of uh, residential schools. Creation of the new federal statuary holiday was approved by Parliament days after the discovery of a roughly 200 potential burial sites, likely of children, on the site of a former residential school in Kamloops, British Columbia. While the discoveries have shocked many indigenous people and advocates say it had long been known and talked about uh, the time of the children who were removed uh, from their families and forced to attend the residential schools never made it back home. The number of confirmed COVID-19 cases in Africa reached more than 8 million, according to the Africa Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. The Specialized Healthcare Agency of the African Union said the death toll from the pandemic across the continent stands at uh, more than 200,000. Around 7 million patients across the continent have recovered from the disease so far. According to the agency, South Africa, Morocco, Tunisia, and Ethiopia are among the countries with the most cases in the continent. In terms of the case load, Southern Africa is the most affected region, followed by the northern and eastern parts of the continent, while Central Africa is the least affected region in the continent. A hospital chain is Brazil's is uh, or in Brazil is accused of testing improving drugs on elderly COVID-19 patients without their knowledge and covering up their deaths as part of an effort to validate the far-right president Jair Bolsonaro's preferred miracle cure for the novel coronavirus. A lawyer represented a group uh, or a group of whistleblower. Uh, doctors uh, Bruno Morato told senators investigating that the movement's handling of the health crisis of Tuesday that uh, prevent a uh, senior firm, one of Brazil's uh, biggest uh, health care providers, uh, pressured doctors into giving patients a cocktail of uh, ineffective drugs, including the anti-malarial hydroxychloroquine. 
uh, much uh, tutored by bolts and arrow, and what was referred to as the COVID kit. Those refusing to use elderly patients uh, as a human guinea pigs were threatened uh, with dismissal or sacked. Last month, and the whistleblowers uh, handed a 10,000-page dossier to investigators containing a series of allegations against the Sao Paulo-based firm that uh, caters uh, to senior citizens. At least uh, nine people died from the coronavirus uh, during trials at the uh, prevent uh, senior hospital chain from March to April last year. But their charges uh, were altered uh, to hide the cause of death, the lawyer told the Senate inquiry. According to Colombia, who has upheld a sentence against seven soldiers who grand, uh, raped a 12-year-old indigenous girl. The Pereira City High Court upheld the sentence for the crime against the girl from the Embera indigenous community after the defense requested the charges uh, be dropped, alleging that the uh, due to process had been violated. The court analyzed over 160 investigative actions, which confirmed that the participation of the soldiers in the sexual assault. Six rapists uh, will serve a 16-year sentence, while another soldier was sentenced to eight years in prison for his complicity in the abuse of child. The case sparked outrage among indigenous communities and activists in a country where sexual abuse of women and girls by the military is widespread. The Colombian army reported having discharged over 100 military personnel since 2016 for their involvement in sexual assaults. A symbolic monument in the Colombian capital has been torn down, and what authorities argued was a move to gain space for the first line of Bogotá's metro. However, the move has gained criticism from locals and from those who had made it a symbol of resistance during widespread anti-government protests. The Heroes Amendment in Bogotá, dedicated to independence figures, became a rallying point during the national strike mobilizations against the neoliberal policies of the Ivan Duque government when it was painted uh, with a series of murals and messages uh, of uh, resistance. While authorities stressed that uh, the, the statue of independence and heroes in Mumble Bolivar, which stood atop um, the monument, uh, will be moved to another site, the artistic expression of the resistance uh, to the government has been erased. Demolishing the monument is a Demolishing the monument is a very hasty decision that could have been postponed for a couple of years. I feel that it is more of an excuse to do away with a symbol of resistance, which is what the monument to the heroes have become. So I think it is like putting an end to the hope of the young people who had seen it as a meeting place to demonstrate our disagreement with the current government. I believe that in addition to symbols, the resistance will continue to be in each of the people who have participated in these strikes and demonstrations that go against the current policies of our government. We have more stories coming up after this financial break. Welcome back. Israeli occupation forces assassinated in Umbanga in the Palestinian village of Burkin. After midnight, the Israeli occupation army stormed with the military vehicles into the village located in the northern West Bank. The Israeli soldiers besieged several houses and arrested citizens, while several Palestinian fighters resisted the harassment. In the midst of the operation, security cameras captured the moment of when 22-year-old Allah Sayyid was concerned or cornered and shot at a close range. Medical sources reported that the two other people were wounded by gunshots and were taken to a health center for treatment. We're still in Palestine, where a woman was killed by the Israeli police near the Al-Aqsa Mosque in the occupied city of Jerusalem, saying as the agents are open fire on the city soon after the allegedly attempted a stabbing attack near Babel Silsila. Local media reported that the victim was identified as Isra Huzaimia, a three-year-old murder of three from the city of Kabitiya. 
and the United Nations Special Coordinator for the Middle East Peace Process Tour of Winsland expressed deep concern over the continued demolitions and seizures of Palestinian-owned structures by Israel. He also urged the regime to cease the demolitions and evictions in line with its obligations under international humanitarian law. Citing the absence of Israeli issued building permits, which are almost impossible for Palestinians to obtain, 302 structures were demolished or seized by Israeli authorities or demolished by their owners to avoid heavy Israeli demolition fees. These actions displaced 433 people, including 251 children and 102 women. Unfortunately, daily violence continued. Overall, 27 Palestinians, including two women and five children, were killed by Israeli security forces during demonstration, clashes, security operation, and other incidents. 4,814 Palestinians, including 10 women and 530 children, were injured. Of these, 3,369 injuries were due to tear gas inhalation. 205 were injured by live ammunition. One Israeli soldier was killed by Palestinians and 41 Israelis, including seven women and one child, were injured by Palestinians in clashes, rock and Molotov cocktail throwing, attacks and other incidents. Citing According to officials at the United States Geological Survey, the Kilauea volcano on Hawaii's island has erupted after hours of increased activity. The large level has been raised uh, to the highest level, but there is no immediate threat uh, to populated areas. The eruption began on Wednesday morning when the Hawaiian Volcano Observatory detected the glow while looking at webcam images from the volcano summit. Lava became visible a short time later, and the eruption appeared to intensify during the night. The Hawaii Red Cross elevated the volcano alert level from watch to warning and its aviation color code from orange to red as this new eruption and associated hazards are evaluated. Authorities in Kenya battled a raging uh, fire that uh, has swept the vast vegetation fields uh, on Mount Longonot. Five fighters uh, joined emergency response teams that include Kenya Wildlife Service to contain the fire whose smoke can be seen from uh, miles away. An immediate assessment from officials uh, showed that, that most of the vegetation has been affected and most wildlife in the ecosystem has uh, withdrawn uh, to safe areas. Officials suspect the fire was started by people grazing animals or hikers who frequent the mountain from the beautiful hiking trails. The mountain is also home to hundreds of birds and is uh, frequented by bird watchers from uh, across the globe. Lava from the erupting volcano on the Spanish island of La Palma touched the Atlantic Ocean late Thursday, sparking fears of toxic gases have been released and explosions. The Cumbre Vieja volcano erupted on Sunday, September 19th, and the lava swooping ever since uh, has left destruction in its path. In just uh, nine days, uh, it has devastated over 200 hectares of the island, destroying crops and some 600 buildings. In addition, it is estimated that, that at least 15 percent of the local banana crop could be lost. At least 5,600 people have been evacuated from their homes, while three coastal towns were completely closed off. The damage to property is estimated at 178 million euros, while the Spanish government has pledged to rebuild the island and support its residents. And as the Cumbre Vieja volcano continues to spew lava and ash, families uh, who were evacuated uh, from the town of Todoque, one of the closest uh, to the volcano, are trying to rebuild their lives uh, after losing their homes, businesses, and most of their possessions. He and his wife are living in the house trailer, his parents at the neighbor's house. The children of the family are staying with other family or friends. We have lost everything, our houses, my father's house, our house, my brother's one, my uncle's one, my cousin's one. Our wine cellars, my wife's business, a clothes shop, everything is lost. We were more or less stable, 
and now we are completely ruined. We bought the house trailer six months ago, and thanks to this, we can escape because we are practically in the streets, in the streets and living badly, bathing badly and eating badly. <coughs> Authorities in Thailand have urged to protect parts of Bangkok from flood waters that have already inundated 70,000 homes and killed six people in the northern and central provinces. The Thai Disaster Prevention and Medication Department said Tropical Storm Dian Mu has caused a flooding in three provinces, with the central region uh, the worst hit. The level of the Khao Paria River is uh, steadily rising as authorities release water from dams further upstream. In the meantime, soldiers set up barriers and sandbags to protect the ancient archaeological ruins and landmarks as well as neighborhoods or neighborhoods in the old royal capital Ayutthaya. The Bangkok Metropolitan Administration is hopeful the city can avoid a repeat of uh, the catastrophic 2011 monsoon season when it experienced its worst flooding in decades with a fifth of the city underwater and more than 500 people killed. The day before the flood, it rained hard up in the north and subsequently caused a flash flood to hit our village. The water level rose rapidly, which was something we'd never experienced before in our Shai Badan district. I'd already packed and moved some of my stuff, but the flood water came at night. I came fast, so I didn't have time to finish moving everything. The water reached the level of my hip in a matter of minutes. We've come to the end of today's news brief. You can find these and many other stories on our website at Telezora English. You can also follow us on social media for all the latest news over on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Telegram. For Telezora English, I'm Ray Gomez. Thank you for watching.